I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And this is Pet Sitter Sitter Confessional. Confessional, an open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Hello, welcome to episode 280. Hello. (laughs) If this is your first time joining us, thank you for listening. And if this is your 280th episode with us. That's a lot. You've listened to almost 200 hours of audio content up until this point. And we are so thankful that you have been along this journey with us. Yes, welcome back. Thank you also to Pet Sitters Associates and our wonderful Patreon members who support us every month. And if you would like to learn more about what that looks like or help us to really keep going, um, you can do so at petsitterconfessional.com slash support. And coming up in August, Megan and I are hosting a weekend getaway, weekend mastermind, weekend meetup. Retreat. Retreat is another good word in Kansas City. The entire purpose of this is to bring together like-minded pet business professionals to talk about, to learn about, and to grow their selves and their businesses and to put to use and to start implementing some of the tools and some of the knowledge that we pick up from here and there and from the past year or so to start looking at what we've learned. Now, what do we do with that? And more importantly, how can we help somebody else and continue to foster that community? The deadline for that is May 31st, so the end of this month. So if you are interested in that, you can go to PetSitterConfessional.com slash retreat, and you'll get signed up for emails, and we'll be able to communicate with you back and forth about what's going on, when and where. Yep, there is limited space for the hotel and everything, so the sooner you get signed up, the more likely you'll be able to be there. So when you hear the phrase pet sitting, what does that mean? I think more importantly, what do potential clients hear when they hear that phrase? Because that is important. Terminology is critical in effective communication. And if you don't know what the other side could be hearing during a conversation or you don't think about what they could be thinking about, not a lot of communicating actually takes place. We know what we're saying. That's pretty easy. But (laughs) is it mud to the other person? Do they not understand? We don't always know what the other person is receiving. And is that our fault? Well, no, not necessarily, not really, but it is our problem when we're cross-talking with someone. And that definitely comes into play with when you're in business and you're trying to communicate effectively to your potential client. So we say pet sitting. The client says pet sitting. What we mean is the service where we come over to the client's home three to four times a day to feed, give medication, take on a short walk, cuddle, play, etc., But the client means, when they say pet sitting, they mean someone who stays at their house for hours at a time or all day and or all night, sometimes even 24-hour service. Yikes. That is a big difference in what people mean when they are talking about their terms. And that is a a big deal. And that's something that we've actually been encountering, this, this particular mismatch, and a lot in our new service area. See, what we have to remember is that potential clients bring past experiences and expectations to us. They're really used to basically two services, boarding and pet sitting. They have either taken their dog somewhere or had a neighbor kid or a friend come stay at their house. They bring those terms to us when the previous options aren't available anymore for whatever reason that is. So there's a potential client asking for a service that you may not offer. House sitting, overnights, they're a lot of work and there are a lot of missed opportunities and they eat up into our time. Now, obviously, if you enjoy them, more power to you. They can be fun, but we found them to be exhausting to go from place to place and never be in your bed. Well, it was fun several years ago when we didn't have kids in our own home and we could be separated a lot, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, life's changed. People find them doing different things. So again, if you offer them and you love them, keep it up. Just make sure that you're making enough money and you are charging for your time. We actually do still offer them to some extent for some clients, but we just make sure that we make minimum wage for the duration of the stay. Well, especially with staff, that is super important. Yeah, we've decided that if someone really wants or needs them, we're going to make it worth our time. And this is the entire point of this particular episode. How do we take a client who contacts us for one thing using one set of terminology And how do we take that person and direct them to what we actually offer and help educate them about the terms that we use in our business? And so because we have kids now and we have staff that we would have to pay at least minimum wage, we are trying to actively get away from doing house sitting and overnights. And I feel like that's probably the vast majority of pet sitters out there as well. That may even be you. People aren't really interested in doing 
house sits anymore, overnights. They want to be in the comfort of their own home, in their own bed, with their own pets, and around their own things at night versus in a stranger's home where you're probably not getting a very good night's sleep and the pets may be keeping you up at night as well. So we are trying to actively get away from them. And instead, our company goal is to convert these clients who want this service from house sitting or overnight request into drop-in visits. And this can really be applied to whatever you want to convert to. Maybe you want to convert more drop-ins to walks because they fit your schedule better or you make more money from them. But for the example of going from overnights to drop-ins, we set the tone for who they're for. So we always ask when they call us or send us an email or text, is there a medical need for overnight care? 99% of the time, the answer is, oh, well, no, we just don't want them left alone. And so that's really the crux of the issue here. The client wants versus the pet's needs. The client wants someone there overnight or 24 hours a day, but the dog doesn't need that. Now, if the pet actually needs it, it's, you know, the dog is recovering from surgery or they're monitoring for changing health conditions, that's a whole different discussion. But the majority of the time, it's because the client feels better when there is somebody there at night with their pet. We also use pricing to message who the service is for. So someone who contacts us and asks for a pet sitter to stay overnight because they really just want it has a lot of thinking to do when we tell them our our price of $200 a night. That price, though, communicates to the client that this is a service that probably isn't for them if they still want to pay for it. That's great. That's fine. At least we're making it worth our time or our staff's time. And so when we tell them our price, and they go, whoa, that's a lot, it sets up a great contrast for the drop-in rates and that type of service. We take that opportunity to immediately talk about the drop-in service benefits and how we could do maybe a late-night tuck-in and an early morning wake-up. But it can be hard, though, because you sometimes, as the sitter, you feel like you're offering them a second-rate service, even if you aren't, but it feels like it's you know, the alternative, the lesser option. It's like someone calling you for chocolate cake and you go, well, the best I can do is Cocoa Puffs, which is obviously not the same thing at all. But it's why our language <laughs> it's why our language is so important. So instead of saying, well, what we could offer are these things called drop-ins. Start off by saying, well, for the vast majority of dogs, having someone around 24-7 isn't really needed. If you find there are behavioral concerns with separation anxiety, we can actually work on that as we build up to your trip. So Fido is better adjusted and more emotionally mature to deal with that. Our drop-ins provide both physical and mental stimulation and blah, blah, blah. You, you can basically go on from there. But, but it really is important, though, to lead with the benefits. Right. Don't even go comparing you, you'll you get this with this or this with this because the owner is ultimately, they're worried their pet is going to be lonely. That is the big deal here, which brings me to a point that kind of annoys me. <laughs> so the dog is fine alone during the day, but must have someone there at night. So I go, why is the, is the pet, if the pet is fine alone during the day, why not at night? What's special about the nighttime? Is it because the owner is there at night? But the logic there doesn't quite follow. And maybe it has to do with the pet having the same routine. You know, the person is gone during the day, but there's there overnight. However, the dog is probably going to miss the owner just as much during the day as the overnight. It's, you know, it's more for the comfort of the owner than for the comfort of the dog in most cases. So what we're doing is we are cutting directly to the fear that that client has, their fear of their dog being alone and trying to jump way past that and do a lot of education along the way. But before we talk about that education, as pet care professionals, your clients trust you to care for their furry family members. Pet Sitters Associates is here to help. For over 20 years, they have provided thousands of members with quality pet care insurance. Since you work in the pet care industry, you can take your career to the next level with flexible coverage options, client connections, and complete freedom in running your business. Learn why Pet Sitters Associates is the perfect fit for you and get a free quote today at petsitllc.com. You can get a discount when joining by clicking Membership Pet Sitter Confessional and using the discount code CONFESSIONAL at checkout to get $10 off. Check out the benefits of membership and insurance once again at petsitllc.com. 
So obviously, if they have communicated that they have fears or there are medical reasons, you can address those along the way. But the most common concern is that their pet will be lonely. So we have to talk about ways to make their pet not lonely and ultimately better adjusted. And this is really knowing the difference between a benefit and a feature of your service. A feature is something that a product or service is or it does. A benefit is something that the product or service means to the customer or that it gives to them. So, for example, the wrong way to phrase something would be drop-ins provide a lot of mental and physical stimulation. That's a feature. That's what that's actually what it does. That's nuts and bolts of what a drop-in is. But the right way to address the fears of a client is to say something like, frequent visits make sure your pet never feels alone. And that's getting directly to the point of solving the client's problem. Their problem is they feel that their pet is going to be lonely. But if you offer frequent visits four times a day, five times a day, whatever, like whatever it is, then the problem is solved. You gave them a solution of, hey, your pet is not going to be alone for very long. But how else can we persuade potential clients and people who are contacting us, how else can we persuade them to go with something that they weren't looking for? Maybe they didn't even know existed because that's honestly what this process is. Clients don't know about a service. Otherwise, they'd be asking for it (laughs) or maybe they don't fully understand it. So we have to take that opportunity to educate them on who we are and what our services are, speaking again to those benefits of our services, not necessarily the features or the nuts and bolts of how they operate. And that starts with using the vivid language, the plain language that they're going to understand. Customers are going to remember a benefit longer and more easily if it's expressed using very simple, strong words that evoke emotion. For example, you may say drop-ins are where we come over several times a day, but a much better way to say that is with drop-ins, Fido gets the care he needs while he stays on his schedule. Because we also need to remember that we need to keep the list of benefits short. It can be really hard because we know how awesome we are. In our, we're, in our, we're very awesome. <laughs> and we know how awesome our services are. Very awesome. And we love talking about them. But most people can really only hold two or three thoughts at a time in their short memory. And, and so they're not going to remember this big, long list of why this service is more applicable and better for them. Well, and they're also probably in a hurry or most of the time they come to us stressed and neither of those helps this process either. So instead of saying, here are the 20 benefits to using drop-ins, you could say, in our experience, we have found that there are really two major benefits to using drop-ins. It's also important to emphasize what is unique to you and the way that you do things because as we've said before, You are what makes your business special. Nobody runs a a pet business the way that you do. So why is the service that you are trying to convert them to so cool? Because just talking about generic benefits of your business, your company, or your services, that will convince somebody to buy it, but not necessarily from you, right? Just talking about the benefits of getting a car doesn't mean that that person is going to go out and go specifically buy a Toyota just means that they're going to go out and go look at the car market. Same thing with us. Talking about the benefits of a generic walk doesn't convince anybody to buy from you. It just means that they're going to start looking around to see what else is out there. So focus on benefits that differentiate you from others. Instead of saying, we will feed and give any needed medications during a drop-in. Well, that's true. It's also a bit boring and generic. Say something like, Our desire is to make each visit a positive, enriching, and rewarding time by providing puzzles, new toys, and making sure their needs are met, or however you want to spice that up. Again, we keep talking about drop-ins in this particular case, but this is something that we've been encountering a lot, converting clients who want overnight care or full-time pet sitting and converting those people into drop-ins. So a lot of these applications, most of these applications, you can use to convert people from one service into another as long as it's still meeting their need. The more concrete you can make the benefits of your service, the better. Because clients sometimes ignore benefits that are too abstract or vague or too wordy. They appreciate and enjoy more specific things that are more convincing and really stick in their mind. So instead of saying something like, it'll be the best time ever when your dog goes on an adventure walk, 
You can say, our visits or adventure walks reduce stress and anxiety for both you and your pet. And throughout this episode, we're not saying that these are surefire ways to convert a client to a new service, that it's going to get you 100% of people converted over. But they, these are tactics that you can start implementing to try to see if you can bring them over. But it is tough when you offer a new service or a different service and you don't offer something anymore or just trying to convert them. So take a holistic approach from your pricing, your messaging, the language that you use on your social media, your blogs, your website. Paint that picture for them and always point them back to the problem that they have and how your services can solve it. Because there are multiple ways to solve the problem that the client has of, I'm leaving town and need to do something with my pet. It's up to you to help the client understand why your solution is what helps them be the hero of that struggle. So how do you do it? Are you finding converting clients to a new service easy or difficult? Or maybe you're converting clients from an existing service to a different way of offering that to them. We'd love to hear from you about how that process is working for you. On this week's Pet Biz Coach segment, Natasha answers the question, when is the best time to market? You market all the time. You market when you're fast, you market when you're slow. I saw this in the Sitter Confessional Facebook group about someone asking about like different ideas they should market. I believe that you should turn every stone in marketing. Someone's like, oh, only do SEO or only do ads. There's no only in marketing. My relationship building old school handshake has been my most valuable marketing play. Not talking about online assets, but why would I only use online when I also can talk and build relationships and have that be 20% of my revenue too? Like all those little things add up. So create yourself a marketing process that you do it two days a week at least. So Tuesday and Thursday is going to be my marketing where I either go out or I create pins on Pinterest or I add more money to my ad spend or I ask customers for more reviews or I go on to more platforms and start leveraging what our business does. Never stop marketing. This is how it works, guys. When you can keep the marketing flowing and you can can count how much business is coming in every single month, then you can keep the hiring flowing. It is literally a pendulum that has to flow equally. You market, you market, you market, you bring in clients, lead gen, lead gen, then you hire, you hire and train, hire and train, and you keep the circle of life continuing to flow. When you only market when you're slow, all you're doing is putting in seeds in the ground, okay? So think of this as plant-based. You're only putting seeds in, in the spring. And then you're reaping the benefits in the fall. But guess what? You're already busy. (laughs) So you want to keep it going. Keep planting seeds so they can sprout throughout the entire year. Different seeds that you put in are going to sprout at different times. Different demand. Um, I also don't like to say only Facebook ads are great. And the next thing you know, Facebook skyrockets their ads and they're not working. Or only next door is working and then the platform goes down. Or SEO is my only option, but then when I go to events, I don't even talk. And all these people at these events are right in my neighborhood that I could have just talked to and booked that. And then those people are referrals. Those people also have a lifetime as a customer. So where one person only came in, well, now they want pet sitting, and now they want dog walking, and now they want products from me. Now they want online training courses from me. Do not underestimate the value of one client. One client is so powerful because remember, that's where we all started with one person. So market everywhere, turn every single stone and do not turn the marketing machine off. Keep it going. If you would like to join Natasha's monthly membership group, you can do so at automatedceo.com and use the code PSC20 for 15% off. Thank you very much for listening to this and any of the other 279 episodes. We are so appreciative of you taking your time. We also want to thank Pet Sitters Associates and our amazing Patreon members for producing these shows. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.